This is a demonstration of the hybrid electric uh, 2008 Highlander uh, energy monitor on the instrument panel. Uh, on the navigation display you can see here that we've got um, the internal combustion 3.3 liter engine uh, shown, the front transaxle uh, which actually has two electric motors in it but there's one motor, the MG2 motor, that uh, propels the vehicle down the road um, either by itself or with the assistance of the engine and then there's a rear electric motor since this is an all-wheel drive uh, SUV um, that will supply power to the rear wheels uh, when needed uh, when the front wheels are detected that they're about to slip or are slipping it also supplies power to the rear wheels when um, you're taking off from a stop sign uh, every single time from about zero miles per hour to three, four, five miles per hour and then it, it does it even more if it detects the outside uh, temperature is is cold enough for water to freeze and have ice on the road so um, that's that's pretty intuitive then we have a battery uh, meter right here these uh, blue bars can turn green um, when they when the battery level gets higher and they can turn purple when it gets the battery level gets uh, low this is kind of an intermediate uh, level right now typically we want the battery to stay between uh, twenty percent of charge and eighty percent of charge uh, this is a nickel metal hydride battery and uh, the reason for that is um, most of these batteries have about a one thousand cycle life which means if you ran them from completely dead to uh, completely recharged uh, 1,000 times um, the, the battery's useful life would be over and if you did that once a day you could see that um, or calculate that it would be close to three years and you'd be out of battery life well these batteries are lasting a lot longer than three years um, as a matter of fact they have a 10 year warranty 10 year 100,000 mile warranty on them so the hybrid electric uh, control system the battery controller tries to keep the battery from going that low and from um, for, well from going below 20 or even near 20 percent or especially below 20 percent and from going above uh, 80 percent so if they can do that if you can do that then the battery life will be longer and have more uh, cycles since we're not doing a full cycle it'll, it'll be partial cycles uh, I'm gonna back the vehicle out of my garage I'm on my way to work the navigation display uh, turns into the backup camera um, as I back out of the or anytime as I back up and uh, and then when I go forward I can go back to the hybrid energy meter or the map uh, system okay I'm stopped uh, on a main um, road in my neighborhood and I'm gonna start to accelerate You'll notice these little uh, gray, uh, what look like pathways, are uh, their energy pathways. And as I start to accelerate here, you can see that we have energy leaving the battery, feeding the front motor that drives the front wheels, leaving and going to the rear motor which drives the rear wheels. Um, I am doing maybe five, six, almost ten miles an hour. You can see that the power to the rear wheels is no longer uh, determined necessary and we're just in a front wheel drive mode uh, right now the internal combustion engine is off there's no power being delivered out of it and I can drive on electric only power mode as long as there's uh, some battery life uh, the, the internal combustion engine just kicked in 
as you can see in the orange uh, bars there um, to help uh, accelerate if I step on the accelerator pedal harder than uh, a certain rate uh, that the battery uh, could provide then the internal combustion engine starts up and helps provide additional acceleration but also this is a little bit cooler of a morning uh, it's in the low 60s uh, outside air temperature and first thing in the morning typically the engine will come on anyway to warm up the catalytic converter and the engine coolant so that the rest of the time during the drive uh, it can go into the idle stop uh, mode whenever we're at a stoplight or a, a stop sign. Um, I've got a uh, Garmin uh, GPS system that I have in this same vehicle uh, that I use not for navigation but because it has a feature it keeps track of how much time I've been stopped versus how much time I've been traveling uh, with the ignition on. And I've, I've done this for a couple of years now, keeping track of this. But typically, what I've seen is for about every 2,500 miles of driving, I have pretty close to 22 hours of stopped time. I'm at a stop sign now. I'm going to accelerate again. Going on to a main road. We just came out of a neighborhood with 25 mile an hour speed limits. Now I'm going up to 40 miles an hour. But uh, anyway, we can. I lost my train of thought there, but uh, I, was, I think I was talking about electric mode engine warming up but um, once the oh yeah the Garmin the GPS I, I had the uh, keeping track of the time stopped versus the time driving and, and when, in 2500 miles of driving I had about 22 hours of, of stop time that this engine would be off uh, when it's off it's not burning fuel it's not polluting the atmosphere uh, this engine at an idle typically goes through a little less than a half gallon per hour. I've got a, another, <coughs> excuse me, um, I've got an iPhone application uh, called Dash Command with a data link connector cable, um, Goal Link, that uh, I use to monitor record uh, fuel economy data uh, as I drive and uh, it gives me the gallons per hour of fuel used. Now notice as I'm decelerating, um, every time I decelerate the, the wheels turn the electric motors. We've got the, the motor in the rear that's called MGR, motor generator rear, and then we've got the M MG1 and 2 are up front here. Uh, MG2, which propels the vehicle, is what we're powered with right now. You can see we have power just coming out of the battery and supplying the wheels. But if I accelerate more rapidly, right there, then the engine uh, kicks in and, and assists. Uh, there is a speed, however, and now I'm pulling up to a, a stoplight just about to the freeway where we can get up to freeway speeds and, and see what's going on. But um, there is a speed, a maximum speed, at which we can drive on electric power only. Uh, and on a fully charged battery, uh, proper outside temperature, engine warmed up, uh, that maximum speed is about 37 to 40 miles an hour, somewhere in that range. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. Quite often, I can be on uh, electric power only up to about 30, 35 miles an hour. But if I uh, go any higher, any higher vehicle speed than that, uh, then the engine kicks on, and the engine has to kick on uh, because the, uh, the 
planetary gear set that these two front electric motors hook to and the internal combustion engine hooks to. Uh, if we spun the uh, motor, the MG2 motor, any faster, it, with, the, with the engine off, it forces the MG1, which is the generator uh, motor, to, to spin too fast. And so by having the engine come on, it helps slow down the MG1 generator so we don't overspeed it. Now I'm accelerating, uh, getting on the freeway on ramp, uh, getting up to 65 miles an hour here. Okay, we are up to 65. And what I've found uh, in driving this for the last three years uh, every day is that the faster you go, the worse fuel economy you're going to get. At the, the lower vehicle speeds, the battery is able to contribute power to the MG2 motor along with the power from the internal combustion engine to propel the vehicle. Uh, but the faster you go, the less effective that becomes and at the higher speed 75 miles an hour 85 or 80 miles an hour we have some speed limits around here of 80 and 75 um, it can't contribute as much and so uh, the best fuel economy uh, that I've recorded in this 5600 pound SUV that hauls seven passengers um, is at 55 miles an hour with the cruise control on, because the cruise control makes a whole bunch of difference in fuel economy, uh, we've got as high as 38 miles to gallon at driving at 55 miles an hour. But if you've ever driven on freeways, you know you can't drive 55 miles an hour uh, without backing traffic up and getting everybody honking at you and everything. Uh, but there are, have been construction zones where we had to drive 55 for extended distances and it would be in the high 30s uh, the entire time that we were uh, at that speed and then um, at 65 miles an hour which is what I'm driving now uh, depending on the outside temperature and the battery temperature uh, because cold batteries don't operate as well uh, the uh, fuel economy is around 28 to 30 miles per gallon. Uh, at 75 miles an hour it goes clear down to 26 or so. And if you drive really fast, faster than that, it's, it can go clear down to 22 or, or so uh, in that range. But you can see here on the screen uh, that at 65 miles an hour, uh, when the battery is able, it supplies power to the motor. When it's not able, the engine is supplying the power through the MG1 generator to supply current to the MG2 motor to propel the vehicle, and anything extra goes back to the battery to uh, recharge the battery. Now these these batteries are DC, vo DC volt batteries. Uh, the particular battery in this 2008 Highlander Hybrid is a uh, 288 volt uh, DC battery. Uh, the, these motors run on three phase AC voltage, which can go as high as 650 volts. So, obviously, we've got to uh, invert. DC into AC uh, to drive these motors, and not just AC, but three phases of AC, uh, because these are synchronous uh, electromagnetic motors, and uh, there's a part out underneath the hood called the inverter-converter assembly that, as we accelerate, it takes DC voltage and current uh, from the battery 
uh, inverts it into AC and drives the motors. Uh, but when we decelerate, it takes that AC and rectifies it back to DC, just like an alternator would uh, in anybody's other automobile, and recharges the battery uh, with that. So we can invert DC into AC to drive the motors. We can uh, rectify uh, AC into DC to recharge the, the battery. Now this is a 288 volt battery, as I've mentioned. This vehicle and, and most, hy <coughs> most hybrids still have the 12 volt battery. And so there's also a DC to DC converter uh, involved in this system that takes the 288 volt DC and steps it down to 14 volts uh, to supply power to keep the 12 volt battery charged. Um, this vehicle does not have an alternator, it does not have a starter motor, it uh, is reliant on this DC to DC conversion. And when we step it down, it's called a buck converter. When we step the voltage up, it's called a boost converter, but uh, we, we do both. This also has an electric air conditioning compressor, electric water pumps, uh, electric power steering, uh, and these, these all run on various voltages, DC or AC, uh, that is all controlled uh, as part of the hybrid uh, electric system. So we're a few miles into the my drive to uh, Weber State University uh, this morning, and you can see even at freeway speeds there are times when the electric motor is are supplied mainly by the battery. Not that often, but uh, typically on my drives to uh, work from my house every day. Uh, I have some stop and go city driving, I have some freeway driving. Uh, the overall trip is 17 miles and in that trip I typically average 26 to 27 miles to gallon uh, in this SUV. Which is pretty good for a 7 passenger uh, 5600 pound uh, SUV. There's not a lot of them out there that can even get close to that. Uh, one of the things that helps this vehicle get good fuel economy uh, is its uh, aerodynamics. Um, this is certainly not uh, a nice sleek uh, vehicle as far as aerodynamics are concerned, but it's not uh, really bad either. Uh, this vehicle has an aerodynamic uh, coefficient of drag of 0 0.35. Um, the Toyota Prius, which is, has the lowest coefficient of drag of any vehicle on the road today, uh, is 0 0.25. Uh, the Chevrolet Volt is 0 0.26. The Toyota Camry was 0.27. Most SUVs are 0.35 or higher, and what that what those numbers mean is, as compared to a a, a cube, a square uh, cube driving down the road, a cube has a is assigned a number of 1.0. So if you can drive down the road with less aerodynamic drag than a cube, now I'm decelerating here. You can see the charging going on. So, if you have less aerodynamic drag than a cube, then uh, you have a number, a coefficient of drag less than 1.0, and this is a 0 0.35, and like I said, the Prius is a 0 0.25. Um, if you have a number higher than 1.0, then you have more wind resistance than a cube driving down the road. And you might think, well, what, what vehicle is that? and it would be a motorcycle uh, with a rider uh, sitting up on the motorcycle. Uh, the rider kind of acts as a parachute and uh, 
causes extreme amounts of drag uh, as you drive a motorcycle. And that's without a wind fairing uh, on the front of the motorcycle, just a, a plain uh, motorcycle. So we're going down a kind of a long steep hill here. Um, going down the hill, instead of just uh, coasting down the hill like most vehicles do, the kinetic energy of the vehicle moving in a hybrid vehicle uh, is allowing the wheels to turn the, the very same electric motors that propel the vehicle, it turns those into generators and we take that AC voltage just like in an alternator and rectify it into DC and, and send it back to the battery uh, for charging. Um, also, whenever I uh, step on the brakes, we have what's called regenerative braking, which uh, now we're driving at a steady speed here for a little bit. In regenerative braking, we use the electric motors to actually brake the vehicle, to slow the vehicle down um, by turning the charge rate up. Uh, if you turn the charge rate up, it puts quite a load on those motors and makes them difficult to turn. And so, by doing that, we can vary the charge rate, which varies the braking force. Now, this does not, these vehicles do not stop on regenerative braking only. They still have a hydraulic brake system that is blended with the regenerative braking, depending on your rate of deceleration. So, if, you have, if you're in a panic stop, you're probably going to get the majority of hydraulic braking and not much uh, regenerative braking. You can see the battery level is high from coming down that hill. It's in the green uh, zone now. Uh, but if you're back to braking, if you're uh, braking slowly, uh, just a gradual brake, then the regenerative braking does the majority of the braking. But it's still blended a little bit with the hydraulics. The regenerative braking does not work at really low vehicle speeds. Uh, so like three miles an hour and below, uh, it's hydraulic braking that's going to be uh, stopping the vehicle. Uh, and Okay, now we're driving a, on a straight uh, flat road here for a little bit. We're going too fast. We've got to slow down. The speed limit's only 35 here as we're in the, the main town. Weber State University is located, and now I'm doing about 30, 35 miles an hour. Uh, the brake pads. Uh, this this vehicle has about a little over 50,000 miles on it. The disc brake pads on this vehicle. I looked at about 5,000 miles ago uh, when I did a uh, alignment on this before a long trip, uh, and they looked brand new. Uh, it's it's amazing how long the brake pads last on a hybrid electric vehicle because of this regenerative braking. Uh, it's very impressive. Um, so hybrids hybrid vehicles cost more than than other vehicles uh, for sure, but. Uh, you need to decide whether it, it will pay it, pay for itself in its additional cost versus what vehicle you've come out of. Uh, for example, I came out of a 1999 Dodge Durango uh, three years ago when I bought this thing in 2008 uh, when fuel prices uh, around here hit uh, $4.35 a gallon. My 1999 Dodge Durango had a 25 gallon fuel tank and to make this same drive every day like I'm doing right now um, I would go through almost a, an entire tank per week so over a hundred dollars a week in fuel costs I was paying four to five hundred dollars a month uh, in fuel my Durango was paid for but at ten to twelve miles a gallon uh, it was still costing me a lot of money and it was old and, and, and worn out um, 
it, it was probably time for another vehicle anyway. But uh, when I switched to this vehicle, the uh, the hybrid Hi Highlander cost about three thousand dollars more, thirty five hundred more than a non Highlander. Not I'm sorry, non hybrid Highlander. And I, I got. I'm talking the fully loaded ones, the ones with all the options. You can get Highlanders for a lot less than what a hybrid Highlander would cost. But I wanted the navigation system and the uh, rear climate control and the leather seats and DVD system and all that in here. So a fully loaded Highlander that's not hybrid was very close, $3,500 or so to the cost of a fully loaded uh, Highlander hybrid. And uh, so for me, it was only $3,500 difference from one to the other. Well, the fuel economy difference between the standard hybrid, or I'm sorry, the standard Highlander and the hybrid Highlander was, was, was pretty good. But for me, the big difference was the fuel economy difference coming out of my Durango versus this Highlander hybrid, uh, the fuel economy was doubled. Uh, and so for me, in fuel costs, uh, it paid for itself within the first year. Uh, now, I still have a, a higher priced car that I had to pay for, but uh, I was going to buy a car anyway. So for me, it, it paid off. If you're coming out of a vehicle that gets really good gas mileage anyway, and it's not a hybrid, and you want to pay more money to get a hybrid to get a tiny bit better fuel economy your payoff may take a lot longer to do and it may not be worth it to you um, however there are other uh, advantages to having a hybrid uh, besides financial over the long run and, and fuel savings and, and brake pad savings um, uh, the, the maintenance costs on these hybrids aren't, aren't any higher than any other vehicle other than the tires uh, I found that the low rolling resistance tires are considerably more expensive than the standard tires that you you can get out there but uh, you get better fuel economy with them also so I'm not sure how you'd calculate that exactly but um, it still has standard oil changes there's nothing unique about the hybrid system uh, that needs additional service. It has its own cooling system, but it, it uses the same coolant that um, is used in the engine. So there's, uh, I haven't seen any additional uh, costs uh, with having the, the hybrid vehicle. Well, we just about uh, to work now and uh, this has been a demonstration of the hybrid energy monitor it's a very useful thing uh, to, to get the idea of what's going on with the hybrid system there's a consumption button right here if I push that it shows us a bar graph of my drive um, it took about 27 minutes 26 minutes to get here each one of these bars represents one minute uh, of driving and uh, the fuel economy is listed here in the x-axis it goes up to 60 miles an hour is the max or miles per gallon is the maximum we've got 20 and 40 and then uh, the up to 30 minutes of driving and it's the last 30 minutes of driving um, these little uh, green cars that are here uh, represent 50 watt hours of power regenerated from going down hills or regenerative braking. So we've created uh, our own power through the kinetic energy uh, of the vehicle moving. And uh, that this can help you fine tune your driving uh, to get better fuel economy. Um, so this has been a demonstration of the hybrid energy mo monitor on a 2008 uh, Toyota the Highlander Hybrid.